Israel. According to the book of Genesis and the book of Exodus. From the microcosmic point of view. Remember <coughs> that in, in previous lectures we explained that the different uh, prophets, names that appear in the book of Genesis and the book of Exodus and all the books of the Bible are symbols, archetypes, that's how we call them. Uh, for us, the Gnostics, the names found in the Bible in many books, sacred books, are symbols. With that, we are not stating that these prophets and great masters didn't exist. They do exist. But, uh, uh, of course, each one of them came in order to represent and to give the wisdom related to their particular uh, archetype. For instance, as you remember, Jesus Christ, the great master, who is the most elevated of all the masters that came to this planet, symbolize an archetype that we have within, which is our own particular individual Jesus Christ that we had to develop. <coughs> Buddha, as well, is another archetype. Moses is another archetype. So, when we study all of these masters, we go deep into our consciousness in order to discover and to develop what each one of them taught in the past. So, in this lecture, of course, as we explained in the previous two lectures about Israel, which is another master, we know that Jacob, the prophet, this patriarch, existed. And he is a bodhisattva of a great angel whose name is Israel. So we know that Israel is an angel, is a, a venerable master of the White Lodge. But we know that uh, Israel represents within each one of us that part of the soul within which we have these archetypes that we had to develop. And that's why when we talk, we talk related with the symbols, archetypes. Because if we read the Bible just as, as it is written, then we find many uh, contradictions due to the fact that we read the book literally with that esoteric meaning. <coughs> and in order to synthesize what we are stating here, let us remember the first uh, uh, verses of the Gospel of John in the New Testament that says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This is the beginning with God. Everything was made by Him, and without Him, anything that, that was made was not made. This word of God, of course, when you uh, play the radio or TV, you find many evangelists that with the Bible in hand says this is the word of God. And of course, we agree with it. That's the word of God. Because uh, those archetypes are parts, what we call Elohim. And Elohim is a word that means gods and goddesses. 
which in this case, from the microcosmic point of view, relate to the different parts that we have within, in the depth of our consciousness, each one of us, that is Elohim, that we need to develop. All depends on our will, because the archetypes are there, but is our will to do it or not to do it. As for instance, we as males, we have in our testicles sperms. And we know that those sperms are seeds that are capable to become a physical body, like the one that we have. Each one of them. We have millions. But it's up to us to fecundate a woman for that sperm to develop and become a physical body, like the one that we have. Not all the sperms that we have, they don't know all the men have children. But uh, as you see, in order to have, uh, you had to do an act in order to develop that. Same thing with these archetypes, which are spiritual elements. <coughs> it's up to us to develop them or not to develop them. And of course, for those that want to develop these archetypes, the Bible was written, which is the Word of God. Now, if you inquire the letters of the Hebrew alphabet, that uh, alphabet is very old. It is uh, stated by ancient Kabbalists and the Master Samael on the or repeated, he said that these uh, 22 Hebrew letters were brought to the earth by this uh, great prophet Enoch, who is the Bodhisattva of the angel Metraton. So Metraton. It's another archetype within us. So these 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet relate to the Tarot, or the Tarot, as we say, which is this uh, book which is synthesized in the 22 letters, so Mayor Akana. So there you find that uh, when we talk about the Hebrew letters, which are 22, from there we study the Bible. There is, for instance, a symbol that we always point related with these 22 letters, which is called the Rossi Cross. in which we find uh, the 22 letters organized in the, the way that should be <coughs> in order for us to study it because every single letter has its meaning as I repeat, in the beginning was the word and if you read the book of Genesis it is written that when God said the word and that word was, there, let there be light, there was light. So Genesis in the, group, in the Gospel of John states that the word is in the beginning. So God creates with the power of the word. And the prophets that put in activity that part of God within them and developed their mastery, they wrought the Bible, or the different books of the Bible, with the letters, Kabbalistic alphabets that Metraton, the, the prophet Enoch, brought in order to explain the Word of God. That's why uh, it is really uh, sad to see evangelists in the radio or or in the TV, trying to explain the verses of the Bible and using uh, 
English dictionary. The translation, of course, from Hebrew into English, some are very accurate, some are not. But in order to understand the meaning of every paragraph, every verse written in the Bible, we need to read it in its original alphabet, which was brought by Metraton, the prophet Enoch, the 22 letters. Because every letter has a symbol, has a meaning. And when you form a word in a Hebrew language, that word relates to those letters and has different meanings. And only by knowing that is how you discover the mysteries hidden within the book of Genesis. Because in this day and age, a lot of people in different forums start debates about uh, the book of Genesis. But they don't know the meaning, the esoteric meaning of this. They are not initiates. So therefore, they, they are lost. It's, it's, it's not possible to understand the Bible without knowing the Hebrew alphabet and the meaning of each letter and to put an activity that within you. Because I repeat, the book of Genesis and all the books of the Bible are written for those people that wants to develop these archetypes. In this day and age, you know, there's a lot of people that have the Bible and many other sacred books in their, in their home. But unfortunately, they do not understand <coughs> what they read. That's why the Master Samael on Beor brought to this world the synthesis of this doctrine for those people that do not understand the Hebrew language and that lack this knowledge. But of course, after we learn the doctrine of the Master Samael on Beor, we have the duty to learn the these letters, because he states in one of his books that within the Hebrew language hides the wisdom, the meaning. So therefore, we explain the Bible and we insist in this, uh, uh, the study of these letters, which are simple, 22, in order to understand what we're talking about. And that's, of course, in order to help those people that read the Bible and that have faith in the Word of God. But remember that the Word of God are symbols that you find in the internal planes. When you meditate, and then the, the Word, in order to receive enlightenment, the Word, in order to receive knowledge, understanding of the path towards God, is called, in Hebrew language, Kabbalah. So this Kabel, which is the word in Hebrew, means to receive. And in order to receive the meaning of what we are studying, we have to enter into a contemplative state. Whether you call it meditation, prayer, concentration, but your mind, your whole being has to be concentrated in your inner God. In order to receive, which is Kabel in Hebrew, derived the, the word Kabbalah from it. This is what we understand. So all the prophets were Kabbalists, meaning they were receiving the word of God. Now, these 22 letters are synthesized in the Word. Because every single thing that we say or is written in the Bible is written with the 22 letters. Hmm? So the whole Bible is written with these letters. Hmm? Which I repeat, you find in the internal planes. And this is how you start understanding the war of God. Of course, there are more complicated symbols inside when, when you have experiences, when you meditate. But th these letters that were brought for uh, the angel Metraton, 
Prophet Enoch were uh, brought with the intention of each one of us to study it. You know, people think that the Hebrew alphabet exists just for the people from Israel in the Middle East and then to write the language. No. This alphabet was delivered to humanity. That's the truth. That's why we study it. Whether we are Jews or not. Because the Bible is that book that is delivered to the Western world in order to walk on the path to God. But it is not related with beliefs, as people think. That if you believe what is written in Genesis and Exodus and all the Bible, you will go to heaven. It's not about beliefs. It's about to study it. Seriously. That's why we agree with, the, with this great master from the Middle Ages, Paracelsus. Aurelius Paracelsus. He said, first, the student has to study the doctrine and to understand the doctrine and then to practice it. But of course, since we lack the meaning or the clue in order to <coughs> uncover the word, that's why the Master Samael on the or brought the mystery of that. Because this is what you find for, uh, uh, in, the, in the tree of life. That, that mysterious sephira, which nobody talks about, and which is related with that tree of good and evil, tree of knowledge, because that means in Hebrew, knowledge. And uh, the previous uh, speaker gave already two lectures related with the meaning of that dot, which is really very deep. Very deep. The tree of uh, knowledge of good and evil related, of course, with the two polarities, Adam and Eve, which, of course, you know, are the two polarities, man and woman, positive and negative. Masculine and feminine. It relates to many uh, symbols. And uh, when you start practicing the mysteries of that, is when you start comprehending the meaning of the 22 letters. Because that contains in itself all of that. Hmm? <coughs> So just by practicing, I repeat, the mystery of that, you start uncovering that and receiving Kabel, Kabbalah, and then you walk on the path. That's why the great master Samael Onveor stated, any initiate that walks on the path has to study two sciences. Sciences. The first is the science of that. The second science is the science of the other tree, the tree of life, which is Kabbalah. One is the tree of life, Kabbalah, and the other is alchemy. That is alchemy, which means the transformation of the forces of the physical body into higher forces. The transformation of the human being into a superhuman being. That is science, practical science. And the Kabbalah is a symbol, the knowledge that we have to develop internally and externally. So that's why in different steps we are explaining this mysterious symbol of Israel, which relates to three prophets. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That reminds me of a statement 
of the Master Jesus of Nazareth related to resurrection. He says to the people, did you ever read that is uh, saying that is that is said in the in the scriptures that the resurrections the resurrection is for the living, not for the dead. He says the living, because God said, "I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. I am the God of." Jacob. You see that? It's written. The dead, of course, are those that not have inactivity. Those archetypes, these three archetypes. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The living are those that these three archetypes are active. So if you don't have those archetypes alive within you, active, you are dead. Because those archetypes are the ones that make us living entities, spiritually speaking. Because physically, of course, we are alive. But we are talking here from the spiritual point of view, which is called a microcosmic point of view. That not only implies the physical body, but seven bodies. The physical body is the first, the vital body is the second, the third is the astral body, or which is also called emotional. Then the mental body, then the body of will, then the body of the consciousness and the spirit. Those are the seven bodies, which are represented in the Hebrew alphabet, by the seven double letters. They are called seven double letters because they have uh, two pronunciations, two sounds, each letter. Only seven. These uh, seven are, of course, in the Rossi Cross that we always point. Because in the middle of the Rossi Cross, we have the three mother letters. Aleph, Shin, and Bet. Aleph, Shin, and, and Mem, excuse me. Mem. Are the three Hebrew letters, which are Aleph, which is the letter A, Shin, which sometimes is SH, sometimes it is S, and Mem, which is the letter M. So there are the three mother letters in Kabbalah, which represent <coughs> the three primary forces. The three primary forces that express themselves through our three brains. The intellectual brain, the emotional brain, and the motor instinctual sexual brain. The intellectual brain is located in the head, the emotional between the heart and the navel. The motor is located in the spinal medulla, together with the instinctual and the sexual. The motor is uh, in the top of uh, the neck. The instinctual is in the bottom of the spinal column. And the sexual center is, of course, in the sexual organs. This is called the motor instinctual sexual brain, related with movements. And the activity, of course, of the sexual energy. So those are the three brains. The letter Aleph, which symbolizes air, is related with thought. Hmm? With the mind. As you know, the brain 
intellectual brain is a physical vehicle of the mind. The mind is not the brain, it's just a physical vehicle. As when you play the violin, the music is not in the violin, but comes from the violin. So the violin is the brain, the music is the mind, which is there. It's just bringing the notes, the sounds of the words. Now the emotional brain, of course, is uh, related with the letter Shin, fire, <coughs> located between the heart and the navel. That's why this area, we said always, is the area of fire, Shin, in, in Kabbalah, hmm? from the heart to the navel. But above the neck, in, I mean, in the head, we have the air. You know, we breathe through the nose, and the air penetrates in the lungs. But this is the area above, call it Aleph, the breath of God. And of course, Mem, which is water, is related with all of those energies that circulate in the physical body, but that are mainly placed in the sexual organs. These are the three uh, primary forces in the physical body. But these uh, three primary forces relate to all the seven bodies of the human being, which are related with the seven double letters of the Hebrew alphabet, which are around the three mother letters, which is the letter Kap, Tav, Pe, Resh, Bet, Valet, and Gimel. Later, we are going to put this uh, rosy cross in the website for you to study it, these letters. The other letters, which are in the outside of the petals of this rosy cross, are the rest of the letters of the alphabet, which are 12. And these uh, letters relate to the zodiac to the 12 tribes of Israel, to the 12 apostles of Christ. So, of course, this is why this is synthesized in the soul, which is symbol of the rose. The rose itself, which has to be red, the symbol of the soul. The soul that put in activity all of those elements. And uh, therefore, those letters are impressed in their psyche, in the soul, are there. And since they are there, this soul, this consciousness, this psyche, understand the word of God from within without and from without within. That's the symbol of the rosy cross. But you see, it's rosy cross because it's related with the cross. The cross of the elements. We have four elements that we name already, and of course, we name that uh, Aleph is with the air, Shin with the fire, Mem with the water, and the earth itself is a human being. It's a physical body, we will say. That is the outcome of these three forces. So the physical body has three brains, then you have the four elements. The earth itself is a matter, the water is a sexual force, the fire is uh, in this area of the emotional center, heart between the navel, and the uh, air in the head. So all of us have all of these archetypes, 22. That's why it is written that 22 are the commandments of God. Moses delivered 10, two more that we mentioned, 12. But in, in, tot in total, there are 22. Of course, that uh, uh, the other um, commandments are delivered to the consciousness, to the initiate, when he is walking on the path. 
scarcely humanity understand the Ten Commandments. And they uh, misplace commandments in different numbers because they don't know about Kabbalah. So therefore, they are lost in this case. So, <coughs> all of that is, of course, within the mystery of Chochmah, which is Christ. Chochmah means wisdom in Hebrew. So, All of us receive these archetypes, these elements, in order to develop. And I repeat, that's why the Bible was written. To guide the souls for that. And uh, the dissension of those forces into this physical plane is symbolized by Abraham and Lot, his nephew. You remember the Bible in Genesis, it says stated that uh, God told Abraham, leave your family, your town, your city, your race, and come to this land which I will show you. And of course, Abraham left the city of Ur, Or, which means light, and descended from that into Egypt. And with him was his nephew. His name is Lot. This is a symbol of the distinction of the spirit and the soul into the physical body. And this is what we have to understand. That's the beginning. Because the soul and the spirit, listen carefully, leave or, which is light, and descend, come down into the matter in order to start this development. In other words, when the physical body uh, starts to develop within the womb of our mother, this Abraham or Abraham and Lot descend, but in the very archetype manner meaning that type of Abraham is not really Abraham, but Abraham. Because that's precisely in the beginning, this prophet was, his name was Abraham. Later, when he was initiated, he changed his name from Abraham to Abraham. You see, and if you discover what is the difference, it's just a letter. The letter He of the Hebrew alphabet that is related with the holy name of God, Yod, He, Var, He, which is translated as Jehovah. So the letter He is feminine. When you place the letter He, which is feminine, in the name Abram, and then you said Abraham. And that means the descension of the spirit into He, which is the lower part <coughs> of the tree of life. Malkut. You know, when you study the tree of life, the ten sephiroth, the last one in the very bottom is Malkut. That's the letter He of the holy name. Because the holy name of God has four letters related for, to, with four worlds. The three superior worlds above the matter are called in the book of P.C. Sophia, spaces. I will repeat the names of them. These three spaces of Kabbalah are Atziluth, Bria, and Yetzirah. And they are related to the holy name of God, yod he vav Because then, when the world of Malkut, which is the physical body, appears, then they added another letter, which is the letter He, 
which is the world of Asya, the physical world. So in the name of God, you find in synthesis four worlds. The world of the spirit, the world of the psyche, the world of uh, uh, energy, and the world of matter. Have different names in different books among the Gnostics. The world of God, the world of the spirit, the psyche, and the matter, the synthesis. Atziluth, Bria, Yatsira, and Asya. In those four worlds, <coughs> it's a lot of wisdom related with the 22 letters. But now we are talking only the last world, which is the matter, which is called Asya. And that relates to the fourth letter, G, which is repeated. Because in the name of God, there are two letters which are repeated. G. So, Yod, He, Bav, He. You see? Two Hs there. That's why Moses says, Oh, Theodorus Siculus, a great theologian, said that the God of Moses was E A O. Three letters. Yod, He, Bav, in other words, in Hebrew. E A O, is it? Because the uh, four letter He is repeated. Yao, we say the Gnostics. When we name the God Yao, we name the three primary forces. So then, when you find the letter He in the word of Abraham in Hebrew, and then you understand that the spirit is already working in the physical body, in the initiation. Because the hair which is there, thanks to Sarai, his wife, which is another meaning there. The name of Abraham in the beginning is Sarai. But when she starts in the initiation, is Sarah. They take one letter from her, which is the letter Yod, and put another He, Sarah. The same meaning, you know. This means that they started working in the physical body. Now, we all, all of us, have this Abram and Sarai within. But it's up to us to transform that Abram and Sarai within into Abraham and Sarah. Right? By knowing the mystery. But there is a mystery here about this nephew of Abraham that came with him. His name is Lot. Which symbolizes the animal inclination of the spirit and the soul towards the animal generation. And it is uh, simple, uh, uh, simply explained here. Let me read for you. The book of Genesis, chapter 13, verse 7 to 10. And there was a strife between the herdsmen of, Abraham, of Abram's cattle and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelt then in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen. For we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. For if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. I mean that because Lot and, and Abram, at that time, it was written in the Bible, had a lot of men and a lot of cattle. And they were fighting. 
it is it is it is enough go to the left and go to the right if you go to the to the to the to the right i go to the left right and this is how lot departed from abraham it says and lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of jordan that it was well watered everywhere before jahava destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. So the, what he saw was the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Mazraim, which is translated as Egypt, as that comes unto Soar. <coughs> when it is written that Lot lifted his eyes and saw the plain of Jordan. We have to understand that when we apply this symbolism, it is precisely the two parts of the spirit. Abraham, which is ready with the life of the physical body, related with all these elements that we have to develop. But the even evil inclination or animal inclination towards these attributes and to just behave like an animal is related with a lot. Because all of us have that inside. We have that Abraham inside that can lead us to the Lord in a positive way. But we have his nephew, which represented us that animal inclination. That we inherit from Egypt, which is Mazraim in Hebrew. Or Mizraim. This is a word that is written, begins with M and ends with M. That means that it's a place in the water. And that's why in this verse we read that Lot departed into the plain of the Jordan, which is Mizraim or Egypt, which is a symbol. In other words, this physical body is watered by the same energy that is watering the internal bodies. The soul, in this case, is between two waters. Remember that when the book of Genesis talks about water, he only talks about two types of waters, the inferior and the superior. Because in the second day, God separates the two waters, the inferior from the superior, and the superior from the inferior, in order to make the miracle of one thing which is the heaven, in us. So, of course, Lot chose the lower waters of the Jordan. Because after that is written there, it says, Before Jehovah, which is the symbol of the Holy Spirit, the sexual force, destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. This Sodom and Gomorrah, or Gomorrah, it is a symbol of the physical body. The animal inclination of the soul towards animality. Which is what Lot chose. Right? He chose that. That meaning that uh, in us there is always that uh, division. Whether we go and utilize the waters in the positive way or in the negative way. You see? That strife is always within. And that's why uh, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. It is, it is stated. It is related with this physicality that tends to go to the animal behavior. Because all of us have that spirituality within. But when we choose, there is always that strife between our psyche. We want to follow God, which is Abraham. But Lot is there also that wants to follow the animal uh, level. So you, you are always there in between. What, what to choose? What to choose? Right? You choose Lot and then you go to Sodom and Gomorrah. You know that in Sodom and Gomorrah there was a degeneration. It's written there. There was really uh, the, the, the cities that, uh, or, or the land that God destroyed with fire. 
microcosmically speaking, that relates to us, physically speaking. Don't put your mind there in, 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 the, in Asia or in the Middle East, according to history, but put your psyche in your body. Then you will understand <coughs> that that Sodom and Gomorrah is within. That degeneration is within. Everybody carries it. As we explain in other lectures, the physical body and the vital body are one body that symbolizes Eden. But if you choose follow, uh, following Lot, which is that evil inclination, then you are following Sodom and Gomorrah. If you read Genesis, you will see that the only one that was found uh, uh, righteous before the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah was Lot. That part of the soul, which unfortunately is related with animality, which all of us have. Because that animality is inherited from the animal kingdom. Because here in the earth, in Malkut, we evolve. In other lectures, we stated that this soul that comes from above, from, from the light, comes to this physical uh, plane and evolve. Evolves from the mineral to the plant to the animal into the intellectual animal. That's the evolution of the soul within the bodies. So that's the journey, of course, of Abraham. But when that soul comes from the animal kingdom into the intellectual animal kingdom, that intellectual animal still have that instinctual habits of being an animal. <coughs> because if you observe this humanity of this day and age, there is no difference between we as intellectual animals and the animals. Even worse, we behave worse than the animals. Healing, fornicating, adulterating, because all of those uh, uh, animal behavior of adultery, fornication and killing and all of that is animal behavior. When you study any animal, you see that. They fornicate, they do degeneration, they adulterate, it's normal for them to adulterate. It's normal for them to kill in order to survive. So that is what we call bandage. Being on bandage. How do you call it, right? Bandage. And bandage. Bandage? Bondage. And bandage. Bondage. bondage. That's the word, bondage. As you said that, for instance, because when you read the Bible, it says, I am the God that took you out of Egypt from bondage. Right? It's, uh, slavery. Well, this type of slavery, is, it is precisely. Because these monads or spiritual forces that we have within are submitted to the demiurge. Who is this demiurge? Are those angels, archangels, and great masters that control the forces of nature and that control the lower kingdoms, the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, and the mineral kingdom? And unfortunately, we still are in the animal kingdom. We are intellectuals, yeah? That's the only difference between the animal irrational and the rational animal, intellect. But we still are animals. We behave as animals. We multiply like animals. There's no difference. So therefore, <coughs> those archetypes or those masters, those angels, archangels, the demiurge, which is called, are still controlling us in the animal way. This is represented by the Pharaoh in the book of Exodus. That control us. But we have to liberate ourselves from those forces. Because they are the mechanical forces of nature. The evolving and devolving forces of nature. And those elements or archetypes of Israel 
which begins to descend with Abraham into the physical plane are the ones that start doing the labor of the, the mechanical labor, the mechanicity of nature. So this is why when you or when the initiator starts developing his own spirituality, he has to fight against Lot, that evil inclination. Because remember that is written that he chose to go into Sodom and Gomorrah, that uh, plain of the Jordan, he says. In symbology means, because it says there, Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord. You say Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord. Which is, or what is the garden of the Lord? The garden of the Lord is the garden of Eden. Because the garden of Eden was watered by the life of God. Or is watered by the life of God. But Sodom and Gomorrah is also the physical body that is also watered by the life of God. Because this physical body sustains with the life of God. Unfortunately, because we are in Sodom and Gomorrah, we just uh, waste the life that God gives us. But if we choose to follow Abraham, and then we utilize that water in the spiritual way. That's why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. The physicality. He says, I am sick and tired of the, of, of the man, of, of this planet, of this earth. But he refers to the physical man, not to the spiritual man. He destroyed the spiritual, I mean, the physical man in the time of Noah. And the time of Sodom and Gomorrah also destroyed the physicality. But the spiritual man, he never touched it. He's always surviving. And this living entity which is represented in Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the initiation, as we were explaining in previous lectures. So therefore, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, he says, if you go into the land of Egypt, of course, the physical Egypt, you see that Egypt is watered by the Nile. As Egypt never need to be watered by heaven, because all of the water, were, they were taking it from the Nile, as the garden of the Lord, which was watered by the river that comes from heaven. It means, by like Egypt, because this Egypt is a symbol of the physical body. In other words, we are divided here. As we said in many other lectures, the superior part of the physical body, which is the vital body, which is located in the fourth dimension, is where we have our own particular individual Eden. But here in this physicality, this three-dimensional world, we have the inferior part, which is Egypt, or Masrajim, as it says in the Bible. And the one that is always destroyed is the physicality, <coughs> never the interior forces that are superior. Because this physicality is like the garden of the Lord. It's like the garden of Eden, as we explain in other lectures. In the fourth dimension, we have this vitality that when we utilize it, we build inside the true human being. But in this physical plane, which is also watered by this life of God, if we choose to follow Lot, the animality, we destroy our, 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 our life. And this is how in this day and age you find a lot of people that uh, justify Sodom and Gomorrah, which means the animality, degeneration. Of course, they, 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 are, they choose the way of Lot going into destruction because you know Lot, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed by fire and that fire of course is the fire of the elements as Atlantis was destroyed by water 
And this humanity, which also is being destroyed physically by the elements. But if we are not doing anything within, if we are a victim of these uh, uh, forces of nature, if we die physically, where uh, is the soul going to? Up or down? This is up to us. But for that, we have to work with uh, the forces of that, which is the mistress of sex, because that's the point, the life that we're talking here, the vitality. And that's why, <coughs> after Lot departs from Abraham, or Abram, and then God talks to Abram and says, now I will give you the promised land. But this promised land, is, of course, is not uh, Israel in the Middle East. That promised land is inside. The different parts of that human being that we had to create. Other bodies that we had to develop. And that only Abraham can do it with Sarah. Which symbolizes the two polarities within us. In order to inherit that promised land. People in this physical world, of course, are identified with a literal uh, uh, translation of the Bible. And they think that the promised land is there in the Middle East, in, in the Mediterranean area. They do not understand that the prophets wrote that in symbol, in order for only the initials to understand. But now all this humanity is between. Or they inherit the promised land, which is the development of the spirit and the entrance into the superior dimensions. Or they, are, uh, or they will be destroyed. Because we are at the end of a cosmic voyage. And at the end of this cosmic voyage, is always a great cataclysm. Where humanity is destroyed. Physical humanity. In order to start a new physical humanity for another development. And that's why uh, the knowledge is always delivered to the public in order for them to choose how to use their physicality. Because I repeat, we have within the two waters, superior and inferior, here and now in our own physical selves. We have the 12 tribes of Israel within archetypes, forces, that we have to develop. And that's why, uh, little by little, as we enter into the path, <coughs> we deliver, or we uh, develop our spirituality. We are born again as a Christian state, because we develop inside the consciousness, the soul. This soul is symbolized in the Bible by the only son of Sarah, which is Isaac, which we explain when you choose to follow your Abraham, your own spirit, instead of following Lot to Sodom and Gomorrah. And then Abraham and Sarah have a child whose name is Isaac. That Isaac is a symbol of the spiritual forces that develop, that develop in the spinal column, which is called the Kundalini, in the physical body. When those spiritual forces start to develop in the spinal column, with the seven chakras, and when finally they reach the top of the head, then the divine soul with the spirit are united in heaven. That's the second birth talked by Jesus. To unite or to be born again by the water and the fire, or the water and the spirit. 
That's an alchemical statement. It's not a matter of believing in what is written there. You have to do it. Because if you are only a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word, then you are lost. There's a lot of people that hear the word, but very few that do the word. To do the word is to develop this alphabet, these archetypes within you. And that's why uh, there's a lot of happiness in heaven when it's a, uh, one sinner that repents. A repented sinner. Who is a repented sinner? It's called a sinner, the one that follows the animal way, as Lot followed in the, it's written in Genesis, to Sodom and Gomorrah. But when one sinner of them repent and start developing inside, there is more happiness in heaven. For 1,000 just men, or souls, than for one sinner that repents. But that's our choice. And then when that birth, when Isaac is being born within each one of us, in our own psyche, the master is born in heaven. And that's precisely the first initiation of mayor mysteries. And then uh, we follow the pact of God with Abraham and Isaac. Thereafter, <coughs> when we create Isaac within, then Isaac continues the path inside of us and develop another archetype, which is Jacob. That Jacob develops in us in our own particular yesod, our own particular vitality, and becomes that man that fights with an angel. The angel of strength. The angel that guides all the animals. The desire of all animals in the animal kingdom. And you defeat that archangel, and then you build inside of you your Jacob. Your own particular Jacob, which is that Israel. You start developing your archetypes within. It is written that Jacob put his head on a rock and he saw in a dream that the angels of God were descending and ascending in a ladder when he was sleeping with his head on a rock. That rock is the rock of Yesod, the Kaaba, as the, the Muslims call. The rock is sex, upon which we have to build our church. It's called the cubic stone of Yesod in Kabbalah, the symbol of foundation, because Yesod in Kabbalah means foundation. So Jacob is the one that builds that, start to build what we call the human soul. Because the first initiation, when Abraham has Isaac, that is the divine soul united with the spirit above. But when we start developing Jacob, then we start developing the human soul. So you see, all of us have a soul, of course, an embryo of soul. But it's up to us to develop that into a human soul. With this, we are stating here that we are intellectual animals, no human beings. In order to become a human being, that element has to develop, as Jacob did it, when he was fighting with an angel. That fight that he had, is in the very sexual act. It's only in the very sexual act when you fight against the animal forces. In the sexual act is when you said, I follow Lot or Abraham. I develop my Jacob or I just go and follow Esau, which is also the animal aspect. In the Bible, there are many levels of explanation. Because 
the power of the sexual power, the sexual potency in each one of us is given by an archangel whose name is Samael, On, Veor. That's the meaning of his name. Samael, On, Veor. Samael gives the sexual strength in the animal kingdom for them to reproduce. But when we reach this level of intellectual animal, Samael gives us the opportunity to defeat him in order to build the superior aspect. If we defeat him. And he is there when we have sexual strength. We have the sexual erection. As male, that is the force of Samael. And it is what Jacob felt at that area in Yesod fighting with the angel and the angel at the end says who are you you're fighting with God in other words with the forces of God and he touched he says in order to to make him free from Jacob he touched Jacob in his thigh thigh is word, right here which symbolizes the sex because the fight was there precisely and then the, the angel is written in, in the book of Genesis. It says, your name will be no longer Jacob, but Israel. Because you fought with God and you win. I mean, you won. So all of us had to do that fight. It's not as people think that we had to be born as, uh, with this race in order to be uh, uh, Israelite or, or from the tribe of the 12 tribes of Jacob or Israel no you have to fight for that and the fight I repeat is in the sexual act and you defeat that sexual potency and you transmute it by avoiding the spasm of the animals the orgasm of the animals and if you avoid that you transmute that into force and then of course your own particular angel, Israel, will develop within you. And that's the beginning of the creation of the human soul. Because the human soul is that part that has to come from your thought up to God. After that development, as we explain in other lectures, come the third initiation, the fourth initiation, the fifth initiation. And then the future initiation is when, uh, when Moses appears. Moses is born uh, in the Nile. In other words, he is delivered in the river Nile. You're right. The river Nile, of course, is the sexual force that sustains the physical body. <coughs> He's there. That's why Moses means the one that is, that is being born from fire and water. Or being born from the water. That's the name of Moses. But that's our own particular individual Moses that we had to develop. After the three archetypes are developed within us. Abraham had to be developed. Isaac had to be developed. Jacob has to be developed. And when those three archetypes are developed within each one of us, and then come Moses, which is a symbol of willpower. And Moses... Take us from Yesod, which is the birth of the human soul, which is the sex, towards Da'at, which is the top of the initiation, in order to see God face to face. Your own particular individual God that you have within. The body of willpower is the one that does it. But in order to develop the body of willpower, previously you have to develop the solar mind. Before developing the solar mind, you have to develop the emotional solar body called astral body. And before that, you have to develop the bodhicitta or the beginning of the development of the bodhicitta in Jesod, which is symbolized by Jacob. So when Moses appeared, it's because within him is Abraham. Isaac and Jacob. Those are the four holy creatures talked by Ezekiel. 
Abraham is a lion. Isaac is a winged bull or the ox. The eagle is Jacob. But the human being to the image of God that appears after them is Moses. The causal body. And when that causal body is developed, then we can go to the mountain of God and see God face to face, as Moses did. That's the path, I said, when you choose to follow the sexual potency because every single initiation written in the Bible is related with the waters. Remember that Moses was born and was delivered in the Nile. And from the Nile they took him. And he became a prince of Egypt. That means a power in Masraim, Egypt, the physical body. He was not a slave. He was a prince. All of us are slaves of this Egypt, of Masraim. Because we follow the mechanicity of evolution or devolution. And that's why uh, when Moses reaches the top of the Mount of Sinai, he finds God. His own particular individual God. Or we, it's better if we say, his own individual particular Christ. And then he talks with that causal body, which is Moses. He says, I am listening to all of those parts that belong to me that are slave in bondage in Egypt in the physical body we need to take them out through you I will do it because willpower is what we need in order to take all of that and you know you read the book of Exodus but of course when Moses reaches that is because he already is developed nobody can go into the top of God if it's not the fully developed in the causal way, the body of willpower has to be developed. And then, of course, this Moses chooses the direct path. He descends and takes all of the people of Israel, which are his parts, all his psyche there, which is trapped, and free them. We, should, we, we must do the same thing. If we reach that level, we can down and to take one by one and to leave Egypt into the promised land, which is a long journey. That's why it is written that when Moses finally took all the parts of his being, which were uh, symbolizing Israel, into the wilderness. And when all those parts were with him, and then God said to him, okay, you are here with all the people, which are my people, because they're parts of me, but still, we need to work with these elements. And then he said to Moses, I am Jehovah Elohim that took you out of Egypt from bondage, from slavery. Do you realize that? People think in this day and age, literally, that the people of Israel, Jews in the Middle East, are the people that were taken out from the city or from the country of Egypt into the promised land, which is in the Middle East, and that there was uh, uh, everything. Interpreting everything literally. But this is initiation. When Moses is in front of God and he tells, I took you out of Egypt, it's because we are out already of this will of Zamzara. The laws of mechanicity, evolution and evolution that we are submitted. Because we are slaves of this uh, world of Malkut, called Egypt in symbology. All of us. If an earthquake happens this, in this very moment, who is going to, or capable of stopping the tremble of the earth? Or a tsunami? Who is capable of controlling a tsunami? Are you capable? Read the Bible and see how Moses did it. 
Moses was making marvels with nature in front of the Pharaoh within him. But if that happened right now, you see, all the, uh, unfortunately, all these uh, catastrophes that are happening in this day and age, earthquakes, tsunamis, hurricanes, everybody is a victim. Because they don't have the body of good power. At least to know when it happened in order to leave the area. Everybody is a slave, a victim. Because we are submitted as the animals and plants are submitted to this mechanical law of nature and the tsunami comes and wipes all plants, animals, minerals and also intellectual animals. So we are submitted to this mechanicity. So we have to leave Egypt. But the leaving of this mechanicity of evolution and the evolution of this uh, physical world is not by believing or by belonging to this group or to this other group. It's by working psychologically in yourself, huh? alchemically in yourself. Remember that Israel was 100, 130, no, 430 years in Egypt. That's a Kabbalistic, esoteric age. After you reach 430 years, then you can leave, starting using your willpower in order to leave this mechanicity of this world into the promised land. But then you have to do a superior work. Because the goal is the self-realization of the being. Written there in symbology in the book of Genesis and Exodus. The Exodus is something that we have to perform psychologically. Don't think that that, that that happened only physically. Because also happens physically. But according to the level of your being. You have to reach certain level in order to you to belong to this exodus. That's why the Master Samael on the earth told us in one of his lectures in 1975. About the exodus. And that we have to reach the 50%. In order to live in the Exodus. But it's Kabbalistic. And then he said after that. He talks about the incarnation of Christ. When you read the Bible it says the same thing. When Moses. Which is the causal body. Is fully developed. He goes in the top of the mountain. And see God. It is precisely the moment in which he decides. God, his inner being, says, well, now you have to go back and take my people out of Egypt. The same happens with us. You have to take all the parts of the being out of the physical body, out of bandage, from klipoth. And that's a very great work that we have to perform. Remember, Exodus happened, occurred, after Moses saw God face to face. And this is what you have to understand. You want to go into the access as well. You have to work very hard in your own psyche. In your own spirit. And I repeat, all the clues are written there in the book of Genesis and the book of Exodus. <coughs> but we have to know how to interpret, how to read it, how to uh, understand it. Because, I repeat, those books are written with the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. And every single word says something there that you have to understand. We explain that to you in lectures. Because we love this humanity. And we know that this humanity has no time to start this type of studies. And to follow after uh, he uh, or they gained the right because nature is advancing in catastrophes and wiping this humanity. So we give and we talk clearly in order for you to choose very fast. And we point to the, uh, uh, to the points, to the main things which are the Hebrew letters. And everything was written in the book of Genesis and Exodus, Leviticus and all of that. Because our, repeat, I repeat, Commandments for those that follow the path. Not to believe in them. 
Of course, in the beginning you study and you believe them, with, but only like that now. Being a, 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 you call a hearer of the word is not enough. You have to be a doer of the word. And that is initiation. So, the direct path <coughs> to liberation is written in the book of Exodus. Remember, to liberation. That's why Moses was called the li liberator or the liberator. Because he's the one that does the work with the help of God. Moses represents the human soul fully developed. United with Jehovah, which Kabbalistically is Christ. Chokhmah, wisdom. This is how we uh, uh, work. And that's why we have books written. And all the wisdom that we deliver here in order for you to understand this. Do you have questions? You just mentioned that the um, nature is feeding us with the test because of our the state that we're in. Um, should that also be expanded to both the financial and political uh, happenings around us now? The question is. Nature is advancing in the destruction and different uh, changes all over the world. Is also the economy uh, related with this? And the political structure? And the political structure? Yes, of course. All of this uh, is uh, working together. You know, there is a word that we always repeat, and there is the word karma, cause and effect. Karma acts in all the levels. Of society. The economical uh, crisis which right now we are living in this country is related and in the world as well is related with the karma. Tsunamis, earthquakes, hurricanes are related with karma and it's because little by little this humanity will be wiped out because little by little we have to pay what we owe. Don't think that if you die young right now, you won't pay what you owe. Because the soul is the one that has those uh, debts within. It is written that in the mind of each one of us, in the atoms of the mind, is within which the lords of karma or the angels of destiny place what we owe. The karma that we have. If you die physically, in your mind, which is not physical, is where this karma remains. And you have to pay it. That's why it is written that those that don't pay here in this physical world what they owe, they pay down there in Klipoth. Because Klipoth, which is called hell or infernos, the inferior dimensions of nature, is a place in order to level the scale. If you have a lot of debts, evil debts, you have to go there to pay what you owe until your scale is even. Nobody mocks the law. Nobody can mock the law. Somebody can kill his somebody and, and, and hide himself from this physical justice. After he dies physically, the cosmic justice will apply the law to him. Nobody can mock the law. So therefore, this economy that we are experiencing right now is the law of karma, work, working through all those elements that are in charge of it. Because all of us contributed to this crisis in which we are right now. All of us are guilty in different levels. Or as we say, every one of us put his grain of sand into this crisis. Each one of us put the grain of sand into this crisis calamity that is happening in the world with the forces of nature. So, of course, 
we have uh, the way to pay or to, or to live, as the Master Samael on verse said, to live the apocalypse, what is written in the book of Revelation, with humanity, or to choose the path of initiation and start paying what we owe in our own way and develop wisdom. So that's why we deliver the doctrine. But you have to choose to practice it and to pay you what you owe by your own work or to follow yeah, the mechanicity of nature and be uh, wiped by the forces of nature. The question is, can we pay uh, the debt, the karma that we have through the sexual forces? Well, the way to pay the karma that we owe is done through the three factors of the revolution of the consciousness. The first is, of course, through the sexual alchemy, by building spiritually and by disintegrating the animal aspect within each one of us, which is the ego. That's the second aspect. Destroying the animality within us, building the spirituality, that's why we wipe the karma, little by little. But it's a third aspect here, a third factor, which, which is charity. Now you have to do a lot of good to humanity. Because by doing good, how do you pay your, your bad debts that you have? So three factors. Death, birth, and charity. To give the life for this humanity at your own level. By working with these three factors of the revolution of the consciousness is how we pay our karma in the initiation, little by little, bit by bit. What is your question? Exactly. I said it. I said 430, but it's Kabbalistically. The thing is this. What is the 50%? It's a good question. I always avoid to say that because everybody wants this free you know, as a gift, you know what I mean? And you have to gain it. What is the half of uh, the tree of life? See the picture of the tree of life? What is the half of it? Where is the half of it? Or in which sephira we find the half of it? Tifereth. Tifereth is exactly in the center of the tree of life. Tifereth is a consciousness, human consciousness. Count Tifereth from the bottom, according to initiation. Malkut, Yesod, Hotness, that Tifereth, that's the fifth. The 50% is that. I hope you reach that. Because it is too easy to say it. That's the fifty percent. Nobody can go into the Exodus if you don't reach the fifty percent. It is clear, Kabbalistically. And all the Gnostics hear that and listen to that lecture on the Vatican Samael, but they ask, "What is the fifty percent?" Is why because they don't study Kabbalah. If they see Tifereth in the middle, it's, it's, it is obvious. It's in the middle is Tifereth, the human soul, the causal body. The fifth initiation of mayor mysteries. Because when you reach that level, you are a human being, but half. Because still you have animality within you, a centaur, a Hannah's moose, in other words. 50 50. If you don't annihilate the 50 part, which is the animality, even if you build your human part, which is the 50%. It doesn't work. You have to annihilate completely the 100%. But if you reach the 50%, then there is hope there. There is hope. Because you have the connection with your own monad. Comprehended? Understood? Yeah? I think what she's talking about, 50% of the elimination of the eyes. Of course, in order to reach the... In order to reach the fifth initiation of mayor mysteries, in order to feel, to build the causal body, you have to eliminate a lot of ego in that journey. When you reach there and you have your human soul, your causal body already developed, you still have ego, but you eliminate it a lot. And remember, the awakened consciousness that the masters talk about is related with Tifereth, with the monad. Not with the person here in the physical plane. 
Because Tiferet, the human soul, is the one that walks on the path. Here in the physical plane, the person has his personality, his egos still, even if his inner being reached the mastery, still has ego there and can commit many mistakes. Can commit many mistakes. You have to understand that. But of course, in order to reach that level, you have to destroy a lot of ego. But look from the symbolic point of view. If you have your solar bodies already created, you are half of it. Because you have still your ego. That's the measure. I believe that I said too much. <coughs> but anyhow, it is said. Yeah. Charity is love. Love is a law, but conscious love. That means that you have to do good, but know it how to do it. Because if there, for instance, a, a beggar asking for an alm, and that beggar is asking for money in order to buy marijuana or cocaine, and you give money, you do good in the wrong way. So to do good means to do it in the right way, to point, to put the finger in the wound and even to cause pain to the person. Sometimes that is good, you know, because sometimes people don't like to hear that we are degenerated, that we are uh, sinful people. But when you explain that, it says you are because of this, and you, oh, that hurts, that is doing good. But you have to do, know how to do it. And of course, other type of good that will be good for the soul. To help somebody that is hungry, to give a bread, that's good. Or to give money for somebody that really needs it, that's good too. But I repeat, if you do good in the wrong way, that's not good. In the end, it's bad. So you have to awake in order to do good. Conscious love. And that is charity. If your charity will help the kingdom of God, that's charity. That's charity. That's good. Because charity is chesed. You see? This is how you say it in Hebrew. Chesed is charity. Chesed is Abraham. Chesed is spiritual. In each one of us. You do charity? If you do it for Hesed, for the Spirit of God, good. Then you build treasures in heaven. But there are a lot of people there that like to build treasures in earth, but that's up to them. Do you have any other question? Yes? <coughs> in order to eliminate the eye, you have to know how to meditate. How to comprehend that I. Because that I, or ego, is an element <coughs> that traps the consciousness. That consciousness, which is trapped in that ego, is acting in the wrong way, as we said in, uh, in the previous explanation. Doing good sometimes in the wrong way. But by comprehending the ego in meditation, and then you put in activity your consciousness, in order for that conscience to do good in the right way. Or if I was doing evil, to do that good, which is the opposite. Because ego or the I is nothing but a wrong use of the consciousness. The consciousness in the bad behavior. So when you start doing it in the, wrong, in the right way, that ego is empty. And when the ego is empty, and they can, you, you can destroy that battle. But there is, if there is no comprehension, that, e, that consciousness is still within the battle. The genie of the lamp is still there, trapped. You have to liberate the genie and to destroy the lamp after that. For that, of course, we teach meditation. You have to comprehend and be, sit down. Nobody can do that for you. You have to comprehend your own psyche. And you have to pray to your own god, goddess, Divine Mother Kundalini, in order to destroy and this is how the, the consciousness is liberated. You have to use your willpower in order to control that mind. In other words, 
Moses has to be born within you little by little. It's a process in order to develop willpower. In every single life of these prophets that we are talking in the Bible, Abraham had a wife. Isaac had a wife. Jacob had a wife. Moses had a wife. All of them had, had a wife. So all of us need a partner. Nobody can transform the sexual energy without a partner. As you, for instance, physically, you, you, need a, you want a child, you want a son or a daughter, you need a woman. Otherwise, you cannot, because a woman has a house, you have the, the seed. As well, uh, the same thing internally. You as a man wants to be born again inside, you need a woman. You have to transmute that sexual force that will give the eventual birth within you. Otherwise, it's impossible. As a single, you can reach certain level, because there are initiations of minor mysteries for a single people that can develop with their own sexuality. But when they reach the top of that level, they need to marry in order to go ahead. Otherwise, they cannot advance. 50%. Yeah, to reach the 50% we're talking here. Of course, if we're talking about the annihilation of the ego, you can annihilate a lot of ego as a single person. But remember this, Yogananda, this great yogi annihilated a lot of ego and awoke consciousness. But he didn't go into the exodus. He got to limbo, to hell. Why? Because he didn't build the solar bodies. He didn't reach the 50%. Because the 50% is together. But remember, always, in order to reach those levels, don't hesitate. Oh, I had to do it in this life. If you are capable of doing this life, do it. But when you are not capable, just keep ahead and do whatever you want that the master will give you another body in order to go ahead because you are serious. There are many initiatives that takes lives in order to reach the 50%. But of course, if you dedicate your life to the work, you can do it in this life and go ahead. But don't, uh, don't, I mean, don't uh, lose hope. Because what the inner God and the masters always look for is serious people that are doing the work. Yeah? Do you have to get initiated first to start doing the transmutation? Or could you start the transmutation? Do we have to be initiated in order to start the transmutation? No. Actually, initiation means that. Initiation means to understand, to comprehend how to transmute the sexual energy as long as you started. If you start today, you are already initiated in your own particular individual world. The other initiations that we perform in different parts are just symbols. Symbol of what you have to do within. That's why we always advise those that are really interested in knowing how to transmute a sexual force, read The Perfect Matrimony, which is the book that uh, Matthew Samael wrote in the beginning. And he explains there how to use the sexual energy in order to be initiated. Because the initiation really uh, relates to the internal worlds. Only you will know in which level uh, you are in your initiation, in the start of development. You, you hear friends, I hear the speakers that give lectures, whatever, but nobody knows in, in which level we are. Because that is very sacred and very private. Of course, we have groups here where we reunite teach meditation, etc. But that's a guidance in order for you to walk on your own particular individual path. And this is what we have to understand. And remember, the Bible is a book in order to study and meditate. And better if we know the Hebrew alphabet and to study even with a dictionary in order to know what we're reading. Otherwise, we fall into confusion. Let's emphasize that, you know, alchemy is just not a physical activity, you know. There has to be love in this act. There's, there's a lot of Gnostics seem to get desperate. Have to <coughs> exactly, that's a good question. 
He says, we have to understand that alchemy is not just uh, the sexual act by itself. You have to be loved there. Your partner, you have to love your partner in the physical plane, in the vital plane, in the astral plane, in the mental plane, in the causal plane, to feel that union in all the planes. Because if you start doing this with somebody else that don't even love, after that uh, you just uh, depart, and that is not good. Did you gain karma because of that? Because this is something serious. So when you go, you are single, and you want to work this seriously, you have to find, if you are a man, a woman that really will like to work, not only for one week or one month, for the whole life. That's precisely the commitment. Of course, all of this also depends on the karma of each one of us. Yeah, of course. Many people, as uh, the question is, says that uh, they go into this website looking for partners. There's a lot of websites now that uh, you write and people that communicate and they get married after that. And even I saw in TV, many people that met like that and they're married, they're happy. I mean, but they are not initiates. They're just fornicating like any animal. To be married like that, you know what I mean? What do you think the matrimony was instituted by Christ and by other masters? Because matrimony means the union of two beings that know this secret. But behold all the marriages in the world. They celebrate the ceremony and their religion, but they, after that, they behave sexually like animals. What is the difference? As they fecundate their children, the animals also fecundate their children. They deliver the children the same way. What is the difference then? The holy matrimony is called holy because initiates already know that they have to transmute the sexual energy. So also they marry in order to complete that commitment and start working in the sacred bow of matrimony. But just to be married there and to have children, well, that's good. If you want to celebrate that in a ceremony, but that is not the meaning of the ceremony of matrimony that was given to us. Because dogs don't, don't marry, unless, you know, there are a lot of people that have there a lot of money and they marry dogs with dogs or whatever, because they have, and they even deliver their inheritance to dogs. <laughs> Why not, right? But no, the holy matrimony was instituted for intellectual animals in order to start in the path that we are explaining here. Comprende? Thank you very much.